hello youtube fam hope you're good so i was thinking of what to put on here and i saw some videos on my instagram that i haven't uploaded on youtube that i think you guys would find very very useful so a few years ago actually i sat with pd walson of 121 seller and we reacted to yeba's tiny desk performances with focus and emphasis on the backing vocals um i watched it again recently and it has so so many gems i think you guys would definitely find it useful especially those of you who are into um vocals and want to learn more about like backing vocals and stuff you will absolutely love this it's pretty long uh there are three songs that she performed this is the first one um yeah enjoy um and that's what makes yoga fantastic but anyway we're talking about the backing singers and here we go I have something to say already. <laughs> <laughs> what an intro. I know. Oh my god. It's this thing of togetherness, right? And you know, you can tell that obviously these backing singers are, haven't just been like pulled from the street. They're obviously fantastic, fantastic. which means that they all have their individualistic style and character and texture but then they come together and it's like everyone has to kind of you know for the greater good for now right now <laughs> we're gonna put aside all the things that make us stand out that's right so that we can then for and the purpose can, of this feel that you can feel that unity and it, it's 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 pretty much what i've been trying to tell people that um one of the very strong um tools to the, the word is funny, the word is selfless, selfishness, like right. it's one of the very strong tools to cure that for, for human beings generally is to do back-end vocals. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> That's a good you, one. <laughs> actually, it could be a spiritual thing, whatever it is, but I'm telling you that back, being a back-end vocalist already sets you on the path to become selfless. You know, it's just one of so a greater good and uh, work with somebody else and everybody just comes to, together and, and, and just do that. And that's what we're seeing in this um, short intro. I know, <laughs> absolutely. And then the thing of, okay, let me play again, and then I'll talk. I'll talk about yeah, it. But... Uh... <laughs> Straight tone, <laughs> vibrato, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. and they're so, doing it together. So together, together. So yeah. obviously, you direct one to one seller, and it's obvious that you pay attention to these things. How? It, why? Why would you say it's important? So, um, first of all, uh, we, we see that everything we do now is, they're not things we started doing now. They're things people have done before. And so if there's anybody who is called a professional in that field, what better way to get to understanding how it is done than to critically analyze and break down whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. note by note, frame by frame, technique by technique. So there's a lot going on that obviously is not going on for many people. Just hear the song, ah, thaw, yeah. but yeah. Like, I mean, so like, and we sing the same notes, and we wonder why does it sound exactly the same way, right? So, I mean, we're pushed to wanting to understand, okay, so what are they doing with the note? How are they, you know, bringing the note to us? And so, we see all of this technique. Sometimes we might not even have the name for it, like, we might not be um, literate enough to know what exactly is the name, but we just know that there's that thing, yeah, <laughs> so we have to pay attention to that thing, so like that. Oh, okay, so how do, how do we do that? Yeah, so, and that's why it, it's so important because it has to sound like that. It's like, I see back in vocals as a vision for me. If this is exactly what I have in mind to sound like, then every single brick that makes up that entire building has to be gotten. You should get them. So, Absolutely. it's so important. And if you don't get it, you're not going to sound like that. So, mm, it's a simple that's true. Thing. So, if you brought, this is like the vocal coach in me. I, I'm not going to be here, so I'm literally firing him with questions. <laughs> Because um, I'm trying to learn and understand too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, obviously, we have different 
speeds or frequencies or waves of vibrato, how do we make sure that when we are singing in vibrato, it's together? I mean, it's <laughs> probably never going to sound exactly the same. <laughs> Because even in studio, if I'm tracking myself, I probably can't get my vibrato to be exactly the same every Every time, time. right? So, let alone two separate people. (laughs) So, how, how do you, how do you work on that? So, I think first things first, definition, what is vibrato? What, what, what are we doing? For some people, the thing, the evil is having naturally. (laughs) (laughs) And it runs so fast. (laughs) (laughs) So... It's like almost like, like that, that uncontrollable thing, but like actually it is controllable. It's a thing you do. You just have to understand whether it comes naturally for you. Okay, there's something I'm doing. How am I doing it? And so for backing vocals, yeah. But vocalists, if anybody else does it, but I mean, if it, every, every other person thinks they do it naturally, we have to know that we do it intentionally. And so it's something I do at rehearsals. I make them realize how many observations to make a particular, a particular line that they sound. So we go... Ah, uh, how many do you count? Is it a five? Okay, how many do you count now? Four or six? Okay, and so I tell them, I for this frame, I only want three oscillations. Oh my god, I just want ah, uh, like so I try to break it all the way down, you get so that we can now get get to it. It's all definition. And so I have some people in one to one who are so fast, like ah, uh, like yeah. <laughs> you know, and you do that thing that gospel guys do, you know, and so I mean. They had to learn, like they had to slow it all down. Wow. <laughs> like, like, as soon as Black Badger. Wow, <laughs> right, know, right, uh, right. Uh, what's, that, uh, what's that song again? Uh, um, uh, I don't know what you're song? talking about. Kum kum bilo, kum bilo, kum kum. So I think with that, we can now begin to get to speed and everything. Woo! That, that's some detailed stuff, man. Okay, what do you, for the people, what do you mean by that placement? So, um, singing is painting for me. And so, you must understand that people are literally, people are literally listening to every single word you're saying, but in a particular way, there's an end result in their minds. There's something they want to feel by every word. So singing has to be understood as an active process of painting a picture in somebody's mind and so she can do vibrato she can do a lot of things at that moment just look at this look at this one more time she can do all of that like, one more when you went away where so it's more like a like a moment in that in that frame where she needs to let you know something i don't know what it is but i mean vocally you must be able to represent whatever you're trying to say and sometimes with vibrato sometimes with straight tones sometimes with slurs and and um, and disandos and it's just she just gets it <laughs> and so yes and that's what i mean by placement you need right. to place your voice in the music and do uh with what you feel will communicate what you want to communicate so. moonlight took the day I want to talk about that. <laughs> Please, <laughs> <go. laughs> Please talk about it. So, what I'm hearing is, first of all, there are two guys. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. Really? <laughs> two guys and a lady. First of all, I just want to, this is like a by the side thing, right? But I feel like generally over time, I think 
and maybe there is a reason to it, but I feel like it might just be an aesthetic thing where you have generally you would have two, two females ladies. and a guy, right? And that's then right. you put the guy in the middle, mm-hmm. and that's now become a thing where okay, tenors need to be in the middle. But I'm like, is there a reason for that, or is it just so? First of all, I like the fact that the lady isn't in the in middle, the middle. <laughs> and where I'm going with this is from what I'm hearing. I feel like the guy in the middle is probably holding the the melody from the most part. Let's say alto, right? And so there's a sandwich. The guy is the meat (laughs) is in the middle, and then you've got the bread like that sandwiching it. And even I mean, we'd probably hear, but I've watched this already, and I can hear that his mic is kind of slightly louder than the other two, which makes sense because that's the that's the melody, right? That's the meat of the the backing vocals but i also like the fact that the the textures that they're using yep um and the guy is obviously on the lower octave Mm -hmm. and then the the guy and the lady are on the higher octave and if the the lady was to sing it's probably in a comfortable range for her so it'll probably be easy for her to to belt it right but she's not color blend Right, and if the guy probably, I don't know his range, but this is speculation and this yeah. is, you know, my opinion. Um, if the guy was probably to belt it, then, and she was belting it, the textures wouldn't be the same, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's using falsetto That's and right. she's, I don't know, falsetto as well or whatever. Yeah. But then, the, yeah, the, the focus is we need to sound like Together, one, basically. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, which, um, makes it obvious for every backing vocalist that in um, trying to be professional you have to have like a measurable range and a good vocal register like a, a, a wide um, that you, you must be able to, to to have every one of them in check and so, so that when we need you to sound it a certain way you don't have to scream or be a horse to be able to produce that so i mean that's what we see here also amazing guys Stand, 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 stand. Can you stand the rain, yeah, baby? When summer's gone and there's no use in weighing it out all the time, oh, all in vain. What do you back in Vogue's here, but you never won't let us concentrate like, ah, uh, never. <laughs> Get out of the way, we need to talk about the guys behind <laughs> you. No, Again, I know we're talking about the back of the but <laughs> the conversation we were having earlier. Yes, sir. Right? I'm watching this mm-hmm. and everything has Yeba as the focus. That's correct. And this is me talking to myself as an artist and every artist who's going to mm-hmm. watch this. Like, when you're doing your music, That's right. you need, and there's so much pressure not to do that, but you actually need to be stubborn about making everything make you the center right right. so if you've got a light voice like me don't allow the the music and the arrangement to like overshadow that right you should be the thing that shines everything else has to accompany accompany, literally support that beauty right um so the backing vocals and to be honest a lot of this comes down to the arrangement of the music this the arrangement of the music of this could have been something else it could exactly. have been big band exactly <laughs> exactly um, we're, we're talking about intentionally making sure the music is like directed and focusing on you you also have to be like you mentioned the word stubborn you use the word stubborn and the one who you should really be stubborn with are the musicians because they always like to shine and so please for you, Mrs. James, please cooperate. <laughs> it's not about you, it's about yeah. the artist. You ain't the star here. Always try to, and that's what, I don't know, like, it boils down to the whole being selfless, right? True. The music is the vision. In fact, 
as much as we can say the music centers around the artist, the artist eventually is more like an organogram, right? The artist also is like a means to an end. And so everything has to like follow that flow, the music, the artist, then every other person. Right. So when you create, make sure that you're not trying to stick out, you know, and we lose vision eventually. We Absolutely. Lose vision our results. So Absolutely. Stay in the pocket. <laughs> stay in the pocket. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna be here forever. Forever. But like, even again, the sound, the, sound. the mixing of the sound, the reason, the reason, exactly that. the reason why Yeba isn't. You were talking about speech level. She ain't doing anything that isn't her. She's not having to overcompensate because exactly. she can't hear herself. Yeah. Obviously, she's got in ears and she's able yeah. to control whatever she's exactly. hearing because you can and, see and that. Even individual. that mic is a low gain mic. Right. They use it for like, okay, you want to shoot like in, in a room where there's really no, you know, not so much acoustic treatment, mm -hmm. right? So they use this kind of mic. So the cone is like deep inside. Right. So I'm saying that many people complain when they use the SM7B, but at least um, it's obvious now that she's not even stressing because her gain levels, and you can see that she's always she's, like turning the knob yeah. of the yeah, yeah. Of the controller right there. Yes. And so like, yeah, you need that to, to sound like yourself. The sound guys, this oh, is for yeah, you. This sound. This is for you. <laughs> Make sure we are happy. It's not about you. It's Make not sure me. Do you know what I mean? You know the thing that <laughs> I was gonna swear, but yeah, PG. Um, the thing that irritates me the most is when I'm like at sound check. Yeah. And this happens a lot. A lot of times. And I'm saying, you know, turn the gain of the mic up or in my monitors or whatever, so that I can feel what I'm singing, yeah. right? And then the response of the sound engineer is project. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. <laughs> in fact, what you should do is work on the compression, right? Such that um, at my lowest or my highest, it's not like really, really like biting the speakers yeah. and all that. Right? And like, I should be able to whisper and still feel that. Still, That's exactly. the whole point. That's, that's, Why are we using a exactly. mic? Exactly. There's a lot of people who want to communicate, and sometimes we need to whisper. I want to be heard. Sometimes we need to scream. Sometimes we need to just like leave it like mid surface yeah. and, and, and all that. So please. Learn what it means to make an artist happy, please. <laughs> it's stop. It's so stubborn, these guys. It's so stubborn. Sorry, but we're yeah. calling everyone out today. <laughs> Let's talk about that. What was in the mind of the director when he made everybody sing melody at that point? Like, so I thought, I, it's, it's all about what, what, what we're talking about. So, you have any to shine more? She needed to sing something. So what does it do when everybody sings that melody lightly? It's like slightly lighter than she's singing. What does it do to the music? Like, you realize that it just drives it home. Like, if you didn't hear the first time she sang it, melody's coming. You might not even know that's what's going on. That, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about backing vocals. Many times you don't know what's going, going on. on. You just know that you feel different at mm -hmm. this particular time. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. It helps. Like, I mean, I'm using that as a noun. Like, it is what we call helps. You just get locked in uh, to another dimension of the music. You didn't know it was backing vocals that did that. So um, many times while you're just trying to look for an extra volume for you, you know, maybe to sing louder, you don't know how much you've already done by just being where you are doing that to the music. And so that's what we, we saw here. In the lowliest of space, when you stand Oh, yeah, there's too much. There's actually a lot. We're gonna have to break this video. Up. <laughs> so, so I saw something else here. Um, because I'm, I'm looking at it from also the arrangement point of view. Okay. And how the the, the backing vocals were uh, decided. All right. So you can see how as great and amazing as the entire music is, you can see how simply they um they 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 used uh, what I think we call it harmony. We call it polyphonic parallelism. Okay. You get, it's just what you call basic three parts. You right. sing, I am here, you don't have to worry, I can see. I am here, you don't have to worry, I can see. Like, sometimes you don't have to overarrange. Just keep it simple. simple. Like, just keep it simple. And so we see that melody here, then three parts. Then sometimes, what we call three parts, being simple, is 
in fact, everything we need to do, like, especially when the melody is good. Right, right. Especially when the melody is good. Listen to that. What's the melody? And you see the progression going to there, and so it just makes it so easy. Da, 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 da. Sometimes you just find the sweet spot. Yeah, and yeah. Play three parts with absolutely, okay. yeah. absolutely. And then they probably been been doing this um, all through, um, but the breathing. Yeah. Right, taking breaths yeah. at the same place, like. They're not just deciding when they feel, <laughs> feel like, like I'm gonna take a breath here, I'm gonna take a breath here. Because then it's just it's just not together anymore, exactly. right? Exactly. Um so that's another thing. If when you're doing backing vocals, breathing at the same places exactly. is important. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very important. So. See that that's what the <laughs> okay, visually, visually, right, I'm seeing a lot of hands, hands exactly. and face, yes. right? And those things, when you're trying to create sound, depending on the sound, you have to manipulate certain exactly. things, exactly. right? You have to lift, lift your cheeks exactly. and bite your words if exactly. you want a particular, maybe bright sound. If exactly. you want a dark sound, then it's going to be, your, you know, everything's <laughs> going to be long and dropped, right? And I feel like people don't, they um, underestimate that. They do. So if you're doing all of this to sound like this, and I'm singing like this, already <laughs> <laughs> there's a mismatch, exactly. right? We're, we're not exactly. sounding together yeah. anymore. Exactly. So it, when it comes to like blending and stuff, we need to pay attention to that. How are we pronouncing our words? Our words What's yeah. the sound? Are we placing the sound forward? Exactly. Are we doing it through the teeth? Are we dropping our larynx to make it dark? Like all these little things. Otherwise, it just sounds very disjointed. Exactly. In fact, um, I would see this as a proof of intentionality. Like you can literally see that there's a script they're working with. They know that they have to do a certain kind of thing at a particular time. And so you see everybody going, eh, like that's intentionality. I'm doing this right now. Absolutely. Backing vocals, frame by frame is intentional. Like you have to be so wrapped in the script. And, I mean, and that's another thing that we have to consider because many times bad leadership also doesn't provide for that kind of script for everybody to know that, okay, I'm doing this now. They just think they're just in a lot of people uh, don't even know that these things exist. They do. They like, just, like you said, we, we just wonder, much. like, why did why don't we sound like that? Yeah, it's not gonna happen. And it's like it's not it's not magic. <laughs> no, like it's like I keep using the word frame by frame. Maybe you don't get what I'm saying. Like you're not going to allow any line pass. Like I'm saying, would you breathe? Would you? So three lines, like syllable, like you, you, you're deciding and. It can never be too much. Yeah. You know? So anybody who comes to my rehearsal, like, Peter, you're getting too much. Like, okay, out okay, the door. Like, yeah, you ain't <laughs> supposed to be here, obviously. Like, and that, that's, that's why, it's, and it's all about detail. In everything, in fashion, you know, in making of shoes, in anything, detail, detail, detail. So. Again, why... Why aren't the two guys on the lower octave? <laughs> well, what are your thoughts on that? So, first of all, I, 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 I understand that there are different ways to go about vocal arrangement. You can choose to do one of the 1,000 options. That Absolutely. You so for the uh, arrangers who have decided to do this, it doesn't necessarily mean that another... Yeah. thing wouldn't have worked out yeah yeah, yeah. So, but so i think it's our decision first of all for me it doesn't make it sweeter or less sweeter. so you subjectively have to right okay come to terms of what you want to achieve true like i could interpret this differently very true so, so yeah. i'm just gonna leave it that way right it's fine it's cool i love it if it went low let's think about it what, what would have happened i feel like it would have yes i feel like it would have changed the focus of the 
melody, right? Okay. So in my mind, okay. we've established that that the guy in the middle is like the, the volume that, is okay, like okay. that's the meat. So you if he drops, his eyes right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if he drops to the lower octave, then our ears go to the lower octave. That's correct. That's, that's what I think. Because then they would even be louder to start with. That's correct. And then obviously there are three. So two people doing the same thing would obviously sit on top of the one person. That's correct. Right? Especially when that one person right. mic isn't as loud as the that's middle right. guy, yeah, right? True. So the we're being drawn to the higher octave because that's what the arranger wants. In fact, talking about higher octave, I think it has more to do with Yeba being a high singing person. So I think at that point he probably wanted to enforce the melody. Absolutely. And so, like, so everybody just sing there. And we want her to sound bigger than that individual uh, entity that she is. So yeah. Let everybody just sing out there. Yeah. And then it's like, why didn't that third guy do the uh, the second guy rather do yeah. the high octave as well? Again, like you said, arrangement. arrangement. But then having that separation kind of just gives that dip if, it, if you want. If you want it. If you want it. Yeah. yeah but um, yeah, your choice. <laughs> I was getting <laughs> lashed by the fact that they all did the same thing and then Yeba went off to now exactly. do it. Exactly. Like, like uh, do, do they always put the credits for Tiny Desk? Like, I need to know the arranger of this music. I right, like, probably at the end. Yeah, I need probably. to, because, I mean, why do you think he had told them to riff? Everybody did the same thing. I that, love stuff like that. I, love, I, love, <laughs> I, I know you do. I've heard this stuff crazy guy. And so um, that means that at this frame of the music, it was deliberate. Everybody yeah. was supposed to do the same thing. So Yeba wasn't thinking. She can do a lot of things, of but at this moment, let's do this. Yes. So, I mean, that's how uh, it was done. But um, let's I mean, talk about let's talk about runs. Exactly. That was what I was going to say. Together. Together. Because you know, again, if these these are four singers yeah. who have probably four different backgrounds, exactly. four different styles, and we have to now do a run, right? Together. And runs are just not notes. There are all these nuances in between exactly. that different people have. And that's why we can do the same notes, mm -hmm. but our runs will sound different. Correct. We can even do the same tempo. Correct. But the way we slur maybe two of the notes, yeah. I might do a slur here and you do it later. That's correct. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? So how do we then ensure that we, can that we do it exactly the same way? So if you ask me, I'll answer this question with a, a more genre-specific answer. Okay. Every backend vocalist should at least be sound in at least these five genres. Okay. R&B, so gospel, classical, and... Um, pop? Pop, yes, okay. that's what I call it. So, and, and so when you understand the nuance of each of these genre as a singer, not even the backing vocalist, um, you, know, you know that <laughs> R&B, so gospel, <laughs> those, or pop, like, let, let's, let's put pop aside. Yeah. Because... You can literally have pop artists like um, James Blunt not right. doing any riff. Right. But you cannot have <laughs> R&B, gospel. That's true. And so, and you want to learn about how to do riffs and runs and understand how to move and, you know, go up and down. Reflection in the mercury, mercury. Turn it, turn it by transgression. I stop here, you know why? <laughs> because <laughs> so when we did trust in you, okay, at the, at the competition, right? So there was this part of my hands are raised because I surrender, I surrender to you, it's best for me, worship you because of Jehovah, Jaira, thou be for the king. Yeah. Right. I remember it's that. Still my <laughs> it's still my arrangement. <laughs> I remember that actually. That's the exact <laughs> no. So, yeah. yeah I like <laughs> I like the the texture switch here. Exactly. I feel like this is the first time we're hearing them almost kind of exactly, belt. Exactly. Everything prior to that has been very soft, soft and light. 
this part was kind of like and then obviously they, they're switching registers exactly. right as like they're kind of going exactly. down so it gets slightly bigger i just like all these, these <laughs> details man and i hope people realize how much detail this is <laughs> This is not magic. No. They didn't just wake up that no. day and come and do this. Because no. the truth is, we singers. Yep. I mean, singing, for you to be a good singer, there's a certain level of high intelligence that you That's must right. have. Especially if you're if you create arrangements mm -hmm. or like complex arrangements, so yep. you have to learn yep. arrangements, right? Yep. You have your thinking game has That's to right. be on point. You have to be able to kind of learn things, right? Yep. So, but that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about the ability to learn. Because picking up harmonies is one thing. Mm -hmm. Being able to execute the harmonies is another thing. Yeah. But then this level of togetherness can only come from practice. If they sent the arrangement to them and they never sang together. It won't work. It won't sound like this. Exactly. It, it would be technically good work. if everyone was singing the right harmonies. But that, the thing that makes it gold, that the reason why we're even analyzing exactly. this is because of that detail of them moving together. Exactly. They're right. almost feeling the music You're together. So They're so correct. Right? They're feeling so the, where we're supposed to take the breath together because they, it will hurt. Exactly. You're so correct. Like, people talk about, okay, what happened in South Africa? And I'm like, uh, here, listen, like, we sang, he turned it, I'm not exaggerating, over 200 times. Of course. Like, it's a two-minute song, two minutes, 30 seconds, they're about. Like, the arrangement, okay, that's one thing, but everybody already had the arrangement. In fact, for a while, all we just focused on was, okay, singing the notes right. Now, after that was done, we now got to the part of singing over and over again until everybody could feel the pulse of each other. And so, that's kind of how these things happen. So, it's not magic. It's not. It's not. And you can, you can always hear it. Um, I, I even like <laughs> when when I post videos of like me singing with people, oh. and I sometimes in the comments I always say, "Oh, this was." I always kind of allude to the fact that I know that it's not perfect, and people hear it and they're like, "What's not perfect?" About <laughs> it? And like, because we didn't spend time on it, exactly. And you can't exactly. cheat that. You like, if that. we're meeting today for the first time, yeah. if we decide to sing something with our expertise, we'll be able to probably get it. Mm -hmm. But then we probably wouldn't nail the togetherness yeah. in our unison just because we haven't had the time to practice. Exactly. And I feel like this is where a lot of groups kind of miss it or church choir and exactly. stuff is we focus on getting the harmonies. Yeah. That's great. But that's that's like <laughs> one level. Exactly. The reason why <laughs> I want to encourage people to um, yeah, I understand that many times in this space, right? Somebody like an artist wants to do a song and so he just calls, Oh yeah, you come here, you come here, you come here come to the studio, let's do the song together. Um, as much as, yeah, we've been able to do so many songs with that, but one of my dreams is to make sure that in Nigeria, we have clubs and groups mm. that on a regular are together, such that um, when the artist needs the song, he just comes and picks you, no one's really that you spend so much time together. Absolutely. And that's what one song is, and that's what makes the difference in our backing vocals for people. We, we are always together, like, trying to just get it right. And you, you can't, it's, it's like marriage. You get... Tomorrow, somebody's voice might not be in the best frame. And so what you dealt with the last time might not be what you're dealing with now. And so it's that constant getting to and getting familiar with every environment, with every um, scenario of everybody's voice. So Absolutely. it's important to be together. And for choir members in your rehearsals, I know that there's just a little time. We need to focus on some arrangement. <laughs> but like, I don't know how you get Great it. Great time. Great time. <laughs> work together yeah. i mean if it's important to you right i mean if it, if you don't care yeah. about this much thoroughness and yeah. detail then cool but if it's something that you actually want to achieve the only way to achieve that is time, time. <laughs> yeah it's time. It's time. But baby we don't have to run so hard <laughs> you're nothing to fuck with they see it in the way we are <laughs> but they can't realign the stars. No, you're nothing to fuck with. They see it in the way we are. But we don't have to run so hard. Yeah, 
yes, we have to talk about, that. about that. <laughs> See how everything was straight. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> if they done, if everyone was doing vibrato from the start, it would have been a mess. Exactly, exactly. So everyone held their, and obviously, shout out to whoever is start, starting. I think it's even it's, Yeba or yeah, the, whoever the exactly. first backing vocalist exactly. is starting. Because that's breath control. Because right, exactly. they're holding that note till everyone's completed exactly. it and then the vibrato. I'm, that takes more breath than me. So <laughs> that's amazing, guys. And call me crazy, but they see it in the way we are. you guys that um let's be vigilant let's look at what happens you see that finger you see the way he carefully it's to show that as great as he can be as a musician he's locked in the emotion of the music and so everything has to like be brought to bear of that moment your entire life like if there is no other song after this i'm sure this guy's fulfilled but i pour it all out at this moment and so i want us to create music with heart not just head that is really making an impression. Nah, That's it's true. art. Music is spiritual, and it's a puzzle. And you know, these are all the different pieces, exactly. and they're meant to work what together to form this beautiful piece. Exactly. Like, there's no one. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've been in situations where maybe I have arranged. And I know, I know sometimes we joke about this stuff, yeah. But sometimes it's not a joke. It's true. Where it's like somebody feels. That oh I'm not doing anything interesting, especially uh, like for vocalists, where it's uh, like oh the, the harmony that I've been given isn't, isn't is not as special, sweet as you know these yeah. ones are doing, it. and it's like but your part well, is your part just is as key. important. It's important as every part. Honestly, <laughs> this was all I saw in the entire video, and I felt all the emotion because they are all not only working together based on what they've been given mm. to do. There's also heart in it. Like I'm doing it passionately. There are many other parts that you don't even get to see. It's like the human body, like. My mm. pancreas is working perfectly fine. And if it's not working, I'm serious, I'll be sick. Right. But it's not sin. So Absolutely. everybody working together, you know, obvious parts. Yeah, is like the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the backing vocals are like the trachea or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, they can sin. So, <laughs> so like... Every just, part, every part is, has, Im- is important. Exactly. I can't stress that Every part is important. Every part is important. Like, and then can we talk briefly about unison and how powerful that is i feel like it's a tool i'm gonna actually use that word Correct. tool that we underplay like we feel like everything has to be harmony, no. harmony, harmony. and i'm like there's so much beauty in unison especially when you're like dipping in and out. Exactly. Because yeah, you're, you're literally doing this exactly. for my emotions. Exactly. Exactly. And it's unpredictable as well. Because exactly. I, now I can't tell when you're going to sing in unison exactly. and when you're going to spin into harmony. Exactly. Exactly. And I think it's just something that a lot of people underestimate. They underestimate. And I, I think it's that, it's that narrative that makes it look like only harmony is beautiful. Like, yeah, you sing the beautiful part. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come to the other end of the discussion where you see everything. In fact, everything that could be called music is beautiful. The Absolutely. Music. Absolutely. So, yeah. And I always say this as well, that if your unison isn't tight as a group, your harmony won't be tight. No. <laughs> no. 
In fact, the way I do the one to one is if we don't sound, we have to sound better than this in the family. This is it. <laughs> this is it. To, this is it. Because that, that's where it all locks. And yeah. that's, you know, uh, and yeah. that's where you can even tell, that's where you can test the blend. Because there's no distraction. Exactly. That's exactly. when I can tell whether, you know, someone's going, ah, or someone else is going, ah, <laughs> right? And if it's in harmony, it can get lost in, exactly. you know, our ears are kind of exactly. picking out different things. Yeah, some slurs will just fly up. Exactly. Around, you know? And it's crazy because many singers don't know that they're doing things that they shouldn't do. This is it. Like... Uh, let me look for another song. What song is this? Or not even, not even that they shouldn't do. It's like, are you hearing that you're, you're doing, doing that? that? Like, it's not, I want, it's, I want, right, right. <laughs> I want, I want, like, just do that. Because, so when we're doing melody, everybody has to come to that place where uh, we, we are in the same contour, like, ups and downs, like, it's a strip note here, it's a glissando here, yes. it's a crescendo there. Yeah. Some people are just like, we're talking about the body all the time, like, no, ah, uh, it's where we are. I just did it to, ah, uh, Yeah. Everybody does that. So that's yeah. kind of how intentional um, this thing's there. And I just, a thought just came into my mind that there are probably lead singers or mm-hmm. artists who are watching this and thinking, exactly. well, I don't need none of this because. I don't do BVs and I probably would never do BVs. Um, I, I love doing BVs, actually. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. Right. But even if you will never stand behind another person, I feel like it's good to be aware of this because then when you have BVs, mm-hmm. you can direct this exactly. stuff. Right? Exactly. And also, to not even underestimate what learning what BVs are doing, um, to not underestimate that, you should understand that. Look at what your body's doing. There are a lot of emotions going on at the same time. But we can't see emotions. We can hear it. Mm. Like, the vocal technique per time shows us what she's trying to communicate. And so if we just have to do, ah, and sometimes, ah, then you should actually embrace all of that because you need it for your singing to communicate. What, to the, the, the purpose of it might be different. Yeah. But I mean, it's the same technique anyway. That's so, Yeah. Uh, to learn. Learn, learn BVs, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> learn everything we're trying to learn. Because, <laughs> I mean, the average professional BV is better than the average singer. Woo! I, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> fact, fact, fact. I didn't say it. Fact, like, quote me. Yes, it was in 2021. Quote me. The average professional BV is better. Because there's a lot more detail. Absolutely. You have to handle, like, the fact. Absolutely. And, I, and to be honest, like you said that, um, you, you you can tell the disconnect between artists and BVs. Yeah. So you're an artist that's not clued up at, about this stuff, mm-hmm. and then you've got professional BVs that know everything about this stuff. Man. That sync is not even going to be there, right? Because it's two different exactly. worlds. Exactly. And it's, it, then it feels like, oh, yeah, the artist is doing their thing, mm-hmm. and the BVs are doing their thing. And then the band is doing their thing. So it's like that that overall picture, that beautiful story mm-hmm. is lost because it we're not being there's no focus, there's exactly. no tying together exactly. of all the parts. So in fact if you ask me, the best band in the world is the band whose members are aware of every other component and every other purpose of the other members. Right. So a pianist who knows right. about vocals, who knows about leads and right. singing, a singer who knows about backing vocals, who knows about music. Right, uh, right, uh, right. And a backing vocalist, backing vocalist who knows about piano. Right. So that just creates <laughs> that's the best part. Because everybody's thinking together in this space. So when we're trying to decide backing vocals here, every decision made on the piano also favors that. When we're thinking lead, it's all together. It's a jigsaw puzzle like you said. So how important is music theory for singers? Is it a yeah? Learn if you <laughs> if you want, or is it a must for you, in your opinion? So um, the two major things that I say every backing vocalist must have. The first and most important thing is ear training. Okay. The second and most important thing is music theory because ear training is basically the process of connecting music theory to the sounds that we hear. Right. And so, because there is a lot of information you have to process per time, yeah, it's easier to go for a live recording of about 12 tracks, having 
I mean, knowing the theory behind the structure of the music that you're, you're given to sing, then cramming the sounds that you have. It's 12 songs, you might not be able to cram everything. So what music theory does for me as a backing vocal, vocalist, even though I have a very good ear, is that it helps me say, okay, at this point, I'm playing the four chord, and I'm on the third, I'm on the, you get, it, just, it just makes you know, it just, it just like boom's eye the thing, like you dot it right there, and so you can tell this is what I'm doing. So this is the stress of cramming, actually, honestly, and I, yeah. I can tell you this for free. So uh, um, not only that, it helps you also create. As a backing vocalist, if you ever get to the point where you're arranging, mm -hmm. you also would, I mean, <laughs> you need to analyze what's going on in the music so you can create it. And so, like I said, the most important thing for me is that it helps you be able to take a lot of information at the same time, mm -hmm. to, be, to, to even process it. You find people, music directors like myself, frustrated because the guys keep forgetting what's going on. But if you're there, if you know what I'm you doing, <laughs> you have to, like... And it's it's, it's, all, it's all fun and, and games relying on your ear yeah. when the the heart, the arrangement isn't complex. Exactly. When the arrangement is familiar, your ears, yeah. But when I've been in situations where I'm like, I, there's no way my ear... I've not heard this, this before. before. And even, like, with certain runs, I hear some artists do certain runs and my brain yeah. just doesn't go there. Yeah. My voice just doesn't go there, exactly. right? You know, like maybe going from a seven to a two. Mm -hmm. If I've not done that, it's strange to exactly. my voice, exactly. right? So imagine if I was trying to rely on that. And that's yeah. why with arrangements as well, people go to what they're used to. Exactly. So they forget the arrangement because exactly. they just go to what's default <laughs> to them. Exactly. And this is where music theory comes exactly. in. Because then, like you said, you don't have to rely on this exactly. alone. Exactly. You're only relying on this to basically cross-check, like, okay, am I in key? Am I delivering it properly? Exactly. But you know where you're going. And exactly. I think there's there's... The delivery is different when people know what they're saying. Oh, shit. Like, I was looking at Yeba. Like, let me... I, I saw that, but I said I was, I was going to... Right. Video for it. <laughs> like, she was singing, and... There was almost a moment where she, like, almost got distracted. I won't call it a distraction. She was trying to turn the knob. She was singing, I was like... Rrr, 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 rrr. And she was still singing, like... At that moment, I, it almost looked like she was on, like, autopilot. Right. You know, like, so how do you do that that you can't go wrong? Hmm. No matter how uh, distracting you yeah. are in music theory, like... You just know what you're doing. You're in the music. You're not trying to guess it. Yeah. You know that particular skill. It's a harmonic minor. She yeah. did that thing in the first song that... Ah, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, something like that. She did yeah, something like yeah. that. She did like three different variations. Right. Like, you know music theory enough to know that, okay, these are all the options I have. Yeah. So, you can, and, you can I mean, it. let's not... I feel like we have to, to create balance, yeah. right? There are some people that don't need this music theory because they are naturally gifted and that's a thing we don't like to admit it but some people the same way some people are perfect pitch and they didn't learn that they just know they can i have friends who see notes there's a there's a it's a neurological condition um i keep forgetting the name synesthesia they see wow they see notes as colors there's a when I know somebody. Can you disease? <laughs> Can you said disease. <laughs> <laughs> but like they see notes as colors. So they, if you're singing a C, they know it's a C. If you ask them to sing a B flat, they know it's a B. Because they, they, the, the notes are represented as colors to them. Some mm. people are like that, right? But that ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, so no, I feel like some people are just naturally some there's some things that are just natural. The same way like drawing, for example. Mm -hmm. Some people I can't draw to save my life, but some people just can and they didn't even sort of learn it, right? Yeah. But there's some situations where if that ain't you, you just have to you just have to kind of learn, yeah. to be honest. And I think people who are even like that, I think that neurological condition kind of um they're enthusiastic about it to kind of then research and understand exactly. it. So most people who are into that kind of actually know music theory because exactly. you just want to understand. <laughs> exactly. that's, that's, so when you, when you look at people like Jacob Collier, right. Jacob Collier is a blend of three things. And that's what makes him very, very good. Number one, he's extremely talented. He's right. gifted. He probably has this right. condition. Right. Right. You know, Because um, he could actually pick into microtones. Mm. So microtones are those notes in between. Mm -hmm half notes and semitones oh so he God. can be in fact not just speak he can write a song in them 
That was the song he wrote on Moon River. Moon River is a song he wrote on the key of E half sharp. Like um, that's like between E and F, the key in between at a particular definite microtone sense. I don't know. He mentioned it. He said he wrote a song in that key. So what am I trying to say? You can't find the key on the keyboard. Yeah. So he's that gifted, but he didn't stop at that. He's very gifted. He's well read. And he's very very hardworking. You get what I'm saying? So those two things go hand in hand. So talent is never enough. Mm. Right? Have enough talent, but read about your talent. Know exactly what you're doing naturally. You know, you talked about uh, the, the other time when you did the reaction video. This, this lady who sang, if it had not been for the Lord, the first lady. Yes. Nothing without you. Yes, you yes. Said, you know, since then, we've been calling, we've been calling her Larynx. Oh, I wish. Mean, she, 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 <laughs> so Larynx, how far? I'm sorry. She became a Are you serious? So that day, oh, I'm just, sorry. <laughs> So larynx. <laughs> so so we're, we're all looking at the video together. When you like, she had to drop a larynx. You know, she did that. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> when did I drop a larynx? <laughs> oh, always on my side. On my side. She kind of drops her larynx to darken the sound.